Hello, and welcome to this series of tutorials for vHelix for Maya. Now, vHelix is a plugin for Autodesk Maya that will allow the user to design DNA nanostructures in 3D in an intuitive and visual way. And in this first video, I will show you how to install and get started using vHelix. So first, go to our website, www.vhelix.net, and scroll down to the download links so you can s we have the plugin available for Windows, Linux and Mac and in this example video I'm gonna sh I'm gonna do it for uh, Windows so I'm downloading the plugin which is just one file in all in the case of all platforms it should be just one file and make sure you know where the plugin is downloaded so in this case it's, this is the path and if you're doing this on Mac or Linux um, vHelix might not be called vHelix.mll as in this case, but it will be called something else, the file. Okay, so after you've done that, we go to, let's go to Maya, and in Maya, open up settings, uh, so window, settings, preferences, plugin manager. And at the bottom of the plugin manager, you have a browse button, and you browse to the folder, the path you had where you downloaded my uh, vHelix and just open the plugin file and if everything went correctly you should have a Helix menu item here in the top in the in the Maya menus. So if everything went okay you should see that Helix, Helix menu. Okay so if you want a vHelix to load every time you start Maya you can check the auto load checkbox here and close the Plugin Manager. Okay, so let's get starting started using uh, vHelix for Maya. Uh, so we have a new scene here, and in this vHelix, uh, this Helix menu. Actually, I like to work with this detached like this. So let's just press Create Helix and see what we get. Uh, if you press Create Helix, vHelix will by default create a 21 base pair long double helix DNA double helix. And I have Maya set to uh, shading uh, to, to shade this wireframe. Uh, let's I press five on my keyboard to get it to shaded. So, and as you can see in the outliner here, we have a, a helix object. Okay, so these colors that you get on the on the strands, you can change them by uh, clicking one of the bases on the strand and press paint strand and that will cycle through a series of uh, random colors. I'm just clicking paint strands here. Uh, we also have in the middle, we have this arrow, this is a directional arrow, which is pointing in the direction of the forward strand. In this case, the gray one here is the, the forward strand. And that doesn't really matter in most cases. Some sometimes when you're designing a structure, you might want to keep all the strands of the scaffold. If you're doing a DNA origami structure, for example, you might want to keep all the strands that are supposed to represent the scaffold on the forward strand. But in most cases, you might not need to worry so much about this uh, forward or reverse strand. And there's a little icon in the middle, in the center of the helix. If you click that, you will select the entire helix so you can move around the helix. Okay, let's say we want to create something longer than 21 base pairs. So, delete this. Uh, I should say that in, in vHelix, uh, everything that you do is, um, you can undo everything. So, let's, if we disconnect here, for example, you see that this strand is now colored in green after I disconnect these two bases. Uh, and if I press Z on my keyboard, I will undo this and I will get back the original strand in the same color. Uh, there are a few cases where undo will not work. For example, if you delete a base or if you delete an entire helix, uh, uh, undo might not work. So we're still working on trying to get that fixed. But otherwise, Except for delete, uh, undo should work uh, just fine for everything else. Okay, let's delete the entire helix. Uh, sorry, delete the entire helix, and then creates a longer helix. So 
instead of 21 base pair helix, let's make a 42 base pair helix. So this little uh, option box uh, beside the create helix menu item, if you click that, you get a pop-up box where where you can enter how many bases you want in your helix. Okay, so I made it 42 base pair helix now. Um, another thing you should think about when working with vHelix for Maya is that don't use the Maya's uh, own duplicate function because all the connections within these objects, and especially if the connections are going to other helices, they won't be duplicated. So you want to use our uh, menu item here, duplicate helices, to make copies of your helices. Okay, so now we have two helices. Let's position them on top of each other. And now I'm going to connect some bases together so if you want to do a connection you let's connect this base to so this base to that base so first click this base that you're going from and shift select the next base and then connect bases and as you can see the phosphate backbone rearranged here and we've got a new color for the connected strand and let's make a double crossover junction here. So first select the base you're going from and then select the base you're going to and connect bases. Oh, they got this almost the same color, so let's paint them a little bit differently. Okay. And these connections, they actually uh, they are they have aim constraints, so the arrows try to follow where they're supposed to go if you move one of the helices around. Uh, let's rotate the bottom helix a little bit. Okay, so there it is. Our first double crossover tile created in vHelix for Maya. And uh, I'll talk more about the other menu items and how you add sequence and everything in a later video. Okay, thanks for watching.